let's try this. Can I? Can we solve this at the moment, just as it's written? What what sort of tools do you have at your disposal to solve this? Any suggestions? Okay, now I could, I mean, I've got all this mod arg form stuff written on the board, okay? And there's a good reason for that. But mm, I don't think I need to appeal to mod arg form just yet, do I? Like, it's fairly small numbers. Can't I do something else with it? Okay, so if I write it like so, this is the difference of cubes, right? And I know how to factorize the difference of cubes. I can do that. This is, if you remember the signs, right? It's going to be same. Opposite, always positive, okay? So I have this factorization. Now, if we were in the real number field, right, usually at this point, I would stop. There's nothing I can do with that thing over there on the right. But I'm not in the real number field, right? Like, I can go further than this. This thing, I can do a linear factorization. I can always do a linear factorization because I'm in the complex world, right? So, let's just do one piece at a time. What solution do I get out of this? That's a new one. Let's get one. But out of this guy, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I can either complete the square or I can just jump in and I can do the formula, right? That'll give me a solution. It's going to have complex solutions, but that's fine. I can deal with those. So I'm going to say z equals, right? Help me out. Quadratic formula. Minus, minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. Both of which you want. And then on the denominator, I have 2a, which is 2. OK, you remember that? So let's have a look at this. This is minus 1, plus or minus. What's underneath the square root? Negative 3. It's negative 3. So I'm going to rewrite that with my, you know, I've got imaginary units, right? So I'm going to say that's the square root of 3. That's how many lots of i I have, right? That's the square root of negative 3 there. That's all divided by 2. Happy with that? OK, now I have three answers here. I have three answers. I've got one, and then I've got two, three, sitting in there, okay? How do I know whether I'm right or not? So a bit <coughs> I could just cube the thing, right? Like, that one's a bit trivial to do. I can cube this, and I'm going to, I can tell you right now, you'll, you'll come back to one, okay? So I have three cube roots. Now, this is interesting though. One of the great things about mod arg form is that once you write something in mod arg form, you can see it more clearly. Because you can say, oh, I'm this far away and I want to go that far around. Okay, so let's plot these guys. I've got one, two, three complex numbers. I can plot them as points. Let's go ahead and do that. Can we also test it by sum of roots? By what, sorry? <coughs> oh yeah, of course you can. Okay. Yeah, if you, <coughs> excuse me, you can not manipulate this in a variety of ways that should be able to show that it satisfies this. Okay, now what I'm going to do to help us plot this, right, is being that there are three roots, I'm going to designate them three different names so I can distinguish them. So I'll call them Z1, Z2, and Z3. You okay with that? Now, Z1's easy. I'm going to pop him here. Just call that one. So there's my Z1. Now, when we have a look at Z2 and Z3, if we pop these in mod arg form, we'll be able to work out where these are and then get a picture of what's happening. So how do I convert this to mod arg form? What am I going to do with it? I'm going to have to split out the real and imaginary parts, right? So, for example, if I go, we'll take the negative case first. Okay, so we'll go minus 1, minus root 3i. That's both on 2. Do you agree with that? Okay. So to work out the modulus of Z2, modulus of Z2, okay, that's the square root of, square root of what? 1 on 2. There's the real part squared, which is a quarter. And then there's the imaginary part squared, which is three, three quarters. Yes? Square root of one, that's just one, right? Okay, there's the modulus. What about the arguments? Let's call it theta two, right? How am I gonna get that? Remember we were talking about this this morning, right? You want your real and imaginary parts. So here's my real part, cos of theta two is gonna be minus one on two, right? And sine of theta 2 
is minus root 3 on 2. Can anyone <laughs> tell me what the answer is? Just <coughs> on the face. It's um, in the minus two. We already know it's going to be in the third quadrant, right? Because of where the numbers are. Uh, minus a half minus root 3 on 2. So it's down here. Then you think about, well, okay, what angle is going to correspond to that over here? Minus 2 minus pi, two pi, on, two pi. Minus two pi on 3, which I can tell you is about there. So from these two, I gain that theta equals minus 2 pi on 3. That's my principal argument. Okay. <coughs> yes? Um, will we be going on to the conjugate A little bit, yes. I mean, you're going to see it pretty immediately, like in about two minutes. But well, I'm not going to deal with the formula yet. So there's it too. And there's my angle there, 2 pi on 3, but it's negative. That's why I've gone clockwise. Okay. Now, I could go through this whole process again, this process here, oops, to get Z3 in mod arg4. I can, but I'm not going to, right? Because Z2 and Z3 are actually very, very closely related, right? What's the relationship between Z2 and Z3? Can you see that they are conjugates of each other? You see that, right? Like the first one was minus 1 minus 3 on 2i. And the next one will replace that with a plus. It's just the conjugate. So geometrically, where's the conjugate of Z2 on here? <coughs> on my diagram. It's just up. It's reflected across the real <coughs> axis. Right? So I'm going to go up here. <laughs> okay. So I'm just writing that to indicate how I know it's up there. Right? I got from here, and I just took the reflection. Okay? And that goes up. Uh, because it's the reflection, the argument here is minus 2 pi on 3, so what's the argument of Z3? Just 2 pi on 3, just the positive one, I'm going anti-clockwise, right? Okay, now, we don't need it to work out where the location of this thing is, but there's one angle at the origin that I'm missing. Can you tell me what it is? This guy, this guy here, right? This missing angle? Well, if they all add up to 2 pi, right? That's adding up to 6 pi on 3. Well, I've got 2 here and 2 here. So what's left over is 2 pi on 3. OK, so how would you, in words, describe Z1, Z2, and Z3? How far are they all from the origin? One. 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 They're all, <coughs> excuse me, they're all one unit away. So in fact, I can pop my unit circle on here. I'm just going to do that in a dotted line, like so. Uh, drawing better. Okay. So you can see all of the roots are on the unit circle. And they're not just anywhere on the root unit circle, right? What's the relationships between the different angles? There's 60 degrees apart. So I can think about this. I can say, okay, they're 120 degrees apart. They're 2 pi and 3 radians apart. But more specifically, they're just equidistant in terms of their angles, right? They're equally, equally spaced out around the circumference <coughs> Excuse me, of the unit circle. Okay. In fact, I'm going to write that. Z1, Z2, and Z3 are equally spaced out. Now, when you think about this, and you think geometrically again about what it means to cube these complex numbers, right? You can see it has to be that way. It has to be that way, right? For instance, let's think about the first solution. Okay, the first solution. That's just one. Okay, not very interesting. When you cube one, the f one times one is one, and then one times one times one is still one. So that doesn't go anywhere. Okay, that's the multiplicative identity. You just multiply it by itself, and it just stays put. Doesn't go anywhere. But then when you come to this guy, right? What happens when we multiply three times? Well, the first multiplication will get you there, right? What will happen to the next multiplication? You add the argument, so you land here, and then the third multiplication takes you to 1, which of course is where I want it to end up, right? And of course, Z2 down here does the exact same thing, but it does it in reverse, right? It goes clockwise, there's the first multiplication, then there's the second multiplication, and then there's the third one, it takes you back to 1, which is the number I'm trying to find the cube root of. Does that make sense? Yeah. 